This is Stock Gamer 007 here, and before we get started the VG Bulletin, I am very sorry that I did not upload for more than a week of the VG Bulletin. I was working hard on the Z Blade Chronicles 2 Gamescom analysis, and if you're interested of this analysis, it's going to be in the card above. And because I didn't make a VG Bulletin for a week, I will cover newer news, so that means nothing from Gamescom, probably more with the Indie Direct, um, the Indie Game Showcase at PAX. And let me stop boring you, and let's move on to the VG Bulletin. And don't forget, the link to all news articles and timestamp is going to be in the description below. And let's get started. <music> Let's move on to 2K news. NBA 2K18 for the Nintendo Switch have the same content and modes as the PS4 version, except minor differences. The key minor, well, key difference between NBA 2K18 Switch and the other consoles is that it will run at 30 frames per second compared to the PlayStation and Xbox One versions. That is running at 60 frames. NBA 2K. 80 on Nintendo Switch will be 25 gigabytes. That means it cannot run natively on the Switch without a big SD card. And it's one of the larger do digital downloads on the Switch other than Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2. And 2K also announced Amiibo support. The Pacifics are not announced yet. In my opinion, this is really bad. Who wants to play a 2K game at 30 frames per second? In my opinion, graphics is not everything. It's more frame rate wise in these type of games. They should have an option to sacrifice graphics for frame rate, just like how Fire Emblem Warriors is doing. Before I wasn't gonna buy Fire Emblem Warriors because I saw Digital Foundry and they were like 22 frames per second. I was like, oh, PC best race. I can't deal with that. So I wasn't gonna get Fire Emblem Warriors even if I like the Warriors type games. And now when they announced that it's gonna have a 60 frames per second option. I said, I'm going to buy the event. You see, I'm going to buy it now because a smoother gameplay experience and sacrificing graphics, even if I'm a PC gamer and graphics is everything for PC gamers, you need to have that good frame rate as well. I wanted 2K on the Switch, but at this point, I am not getting this version. 25 gigs a size for the game is not helping it either. Sega has also confirmed the bonus edition of Sonic Forces. If you pre-order the game, you will receive 13 in-game outfit items and accessories that you can use to recreate the look of 5 other Sega or Atlas icons for your hero character. The, the main 5 is Jet Set Radio, Persona 5, Puya Puya, Super Monkey Ball, and Knights. A controller skin will be included as well. And the game! This is the best part. $39.99 or $40. As soon as I seen $40 for Sonic Force, I said it might be short as Sonic Generation. But when I saw the bonus edition content, I said I have to pre order this for the Nintendo Switch for that controller skin. I wasn't gonna buy Nintendo Switch version because 30 frames per second and why not? Because PC Master Race. But let's, this is a this is a Nintendo channel. Let's move that. I love Nintendo Switch as well. But but after seeing the control skin, I need this. The cherry on top was a Persona 5 skin from the best story in all eight generations of gaming hands down and Jet Set Radio Sun. Yo, Jet Set Radio skins? Amazing. And Super Monkey Ball skin? Oh my god. It looks like I'm paying $80 for this game in November 7th that's when it was officially announced to come out November 7th once on PC for, for the mod community because I love mods from the community I hope they have mods for the community and another for the Nintendo Switch because why not that controller skin is amazing let's move on to the VG Bulletin Mini we got four bullets to shoot through and let's get started with Nintendo partners with Western Digital to create a license Switch SanDisk memory card and it will be released later in October this year. 
let's swim to Splatoon news. Splatoon 2 will be releasing Forge Splattershot Pro with a new bubble blower special. It will come with a suction bomb sub weapon. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as the regular Splattershot Pro. And it'll be available right before the Splatfest between Flight and Invisibility. Let's run to Runner 3 news. At PAX West, there was a playable demo of Runner 3, and it was also confirmed to be delayed to 2018. If you want to see the playable demo, it's going to be in the description below. Let's slice through to Monster Hunter Double Cross news. Monster Hunter Double Cross for the Nintendo Switch sold through 49% of the initial shipment in Japan. All we can say to Capcom is please localize this game for all Switch users out there. So let's walk to Square Enix news. Project Octopath Traveler, Lost Fear, and Secret of Mana is going to be at TGS this year. And if you want the full list of Square Enix games coming to TGS, it's going to be in the description below. So that's everything part of the VG Bolton Mini. So let's move on to the last two pieces of news of today. Let's continue with Nintendo news that a verdict was finally handed down. A jury in Dallas, Texas sided with Highlight and Nintendo will be forced to pay $10 million. On, if you don't know the history of the case, I'd be telling you that Highlight the Technology Inc. and the Dallas-based law firm Munch Willison Mandela filed a $144 million patent infringement case against Nintendo of America. Nintendo was accused for infringing on iLive Motion Sensing, the Celeronor technology present in the Wii Remote Controls. Nintendo lost the case and they forcibly have to give iLive $10 million. Nintendo lost $10 million, so what? It's not as bad as the original lawsuit. If you didn't know, the original lawsuit was looking to attain $4 per unit royalty payment tied to the 36 million Wii system sold in six years before the suit was filled. Nintendo got away and they only have to pay $10 million. This court case gave me a lot of hope that Nintendo be able to avoid problems that could be that could destroy their company or lose money in general. Like the court case against Game Vice. For some good reason, they want to end production of Nintendo Switch. And I don't know how that's going to benefit them. That will only screw Nintendo, screw everybody that bought the Switch, because Nintendo's not going to support a system they can't sell anymore. So, this will be really, really bad. I hope Nintendo will be able to avoid Game Vice or make the case take so long that the Switch will be already discontinued by the end of the case and we can move on to the next Nintendo console. Let's move on to the last news of today. The legendary Travis Touchdown is going to go to the medieval world of Shovel Knight as part of the six worlds that was part of Travis Strikes Again No More Heroes. As a reminder if you didn't know, Travis Touchdown is going to be exploring through the world of Hotline Miami. So this also confirmed two worlds since the Nindy Night or the Nindy Showcase from yesterday. This was the best part of the Nindy Showcase. I only played the original No More Heroes but I cannot wait because it looks like it's going to be between the original and the second No More Heroes. Um, and I, that means I necessarily I don't really need to play the second one but I I am planning to play the original one again and I'm planning to play the second one that I didn't play before, before it released in 2018. But Grasshopper Studio could also help me by releasing a remaster for the Switch of the first two No More Heroes. So yes, it's about time to end my video. I would love if you could subscribe to help expand my channel and share the video if you think you're going to form someone else and comment below. I would love to hear comments. So this is Talk Gamer 007 and I see you in the next one. Peace.